So now we change, uh, we change uh, the uh, track completely. Um, we have a Theravada Buddhist monk from Sri Lanka. And uh, I will not hold a quiz to find out who that is. I think <laughs> you, you, guys, you guys can figure, figure that out. Uh, Theravada Buddhists follow teaching as written in the original sacred language of Pali, uh, which came from the northern part. Uh, Pali, which was derived and or in conjunction used with Sanskrit. Uh, there's a little tidbit, uh, Sumita, is that I'm, my forefathers from Kashmir were the ones that translated the Pali texts into Tibetians for the Mahayana Buddhism. And during the reign of Emperor Kanishka, 200 BCE, the fourth conference of religions happened in the Valley of Kashmir. So we have a long history in your tradition. Uh, Sumita, as he asked me to call him, uh, but he's actually, uh, you know, a long name, uh, is a founder president of US Pali Society, pursuing his PhD at University of the West in Rosemead, conduct, conducts meditation programs and social welfare programs. His first name, Nivithi Gala, means practicality, realism, reliability, discipline, sincerity, and experience. <laughs> go, go, go figure that out. He has a tough, uh, tough bar to, I'm sure he's gonna meet every one of them. The term thero at the end actually is sort of incorrect. Thero means uh, elder, but uh, Sumita is Mahathero which means he has crossed 10, 15 years uh, of uh, the monastic order. And uh, so he is really called Mahathera. Now, in his own words, when he sent his communication to us, he says, wherever I am, I can make it my home. So I make it my home right here and now. Would you please welcome? Thank you, everyone. Um, the minute I entered this beautiful place, this beautiful building, I felt the vibration, the spiritual aura here, the amazing, powerful unity in diversity, the spirits. I felt it. And it's so nice to meet all these beautiful spiritual friends. And thank you for inviting me to be a part of this uh, Congress. When I was a little kid, uh, some monks, you know, uh, senior monks approached my mom. She, uh, uh, these monks asked, uh, uh, can you uh, offer your child to the Buddhist order? I was a small child. It's a very um, natural thing in Sri Lanka. We have over 10,000 Buddhist temples in Sri Lanka. Over 40,000 Sri Lankan Buddhist monks. That's the most powerful, you can say, uh, NGO. <laughs> Very powerful, yes. They are scattered all over Sri Lanka. So we see them um, walking across the street every time. And we see them. We are, we are used to that beautiful sight, the saffron robe. And my mom asked, do you want to join? I said, why not? <laughs> Actually, my family had seven children. So my mom was uh, asking me, if you want to join, you can. I thought, okay, because I heard if you become a monk, you can study. <laughs> you can study and, the, and my, my sisters warning me, you know what, if you go to the temple, the monk, the chief monk, he has a cane under the pillow. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> I said, it's good, I want to study. <laughs> Actually, that was the beginning. And I came out of the small family and I came to the temple as a small monk. I, I embraced the whole community. 
And then I, when I came to the temple, I saw everyone come to the temple was my mother, was my father, was my brother, was my sister. So wherever I, do, I go, I have no problem. I had the capacity, uh, training, to embrace the, the society as my own. This is the, the spirit, the true spirit that I learned from my own training of Buddhism. So when I went to India, I, I had the same feeling. But because of my robe sometimes, people ask me, what are you wearing? <laughs> you know, I had some uh, problems. Uh, it took me for a while to pick up Hindi. And then I started speaking in Hindi and all these people became my so good friends. So what I found is the problem, the language. Then language played a very crucial barrier among us. You know, when we speak in their own language, they feel so honored. You feel so honored. So the cultural differences, the language barriers, and all these actually set us apart, divide us into pieces. We, take, we talk about P-E-A-C-E, -E, but we see these things like culture, uh, the language, and the geographical, and uh, climate changes, and all these things can actually change us, attitude-wise, and so many ways. But we have to think that these are all uh, our own human uh, family. In Sanskrit it is said, Vasudhaiva Kutumbakang, right? It's a beautiful saying. Vasudhaiva Kutumbakang. The whole universe is actually one family. No matter what religion you belong to, no matter uh, your education whatsoever, we are all one human family. That is very important. So what I learned through Buddhism, we need to respect everyone. We need to uh, welcome, appreciate each other. Only when you are open to respect others, you can be respected by others. You can force people to, come on, come on, I'm a Buddhist monk, respect me. We can tell that. We have to show that in action. When we walk, when we work, when we talk, we have to show, I deserve to be respected. So these things are very important for all of us. To learn our life, to see, look into our own life. We don't live forever, right? We have a short life, actually. So the Buddha said, if we know that you are going to die one day, you will never fight. Why? Because we don't live forever. We have a short life. So live life to the full, but be peaceful, be meaningful. When in looking back into your life, you feel happy. If you feel happy, I have done my duty towards my family, towards my society. I have done my duty. You feel happy, right? You can smile even at the, the face of death. You can die happily, peacefully. That is the kind of life the Buddha advised us to conduct. And Buddha himself was very welcome, accepted by all the other different religions of those days. He was a very um, friendly person. He was very welcomed by the Hindu ashrams and all. He used to visit those uh, beautiful spiritual friends. He visited them and they really liked him. And remember, he did not have something called Buddhist. For him, all humanity, everyone was just a human being. So there was no label. We, we just say today, I am, I'm Buddhist, I'm Christian or whatever, you know. <laughs> But if we come out of that, that barrier, 
that limitation, we become embraced, we become open to everyone. So we feel much more comfortable. Sometimes we feel, we try to limit ourselves to so many things. My country, you know, even within the country, my region, you know, so many things we try to limit ourselves. If we come out of that barrier, we have a great forum for us to unite. United we stand, divided we fall. So the great humanity is what is most important for all of us. United States of America, I found, as one of the most beautiful land for all religions, all the spiritual friends to grow as a one family, one united family. And this land has the greatest freedom. It is so amazing. And today we are talking about that very true spirit. When I was listening to uh, Mr. Jiga, it was so wonderful, very inspiring true story. This is what we actually have to do. Because the mankind today is really in, da in danger. Mankind has, uh, according to um, um, Dr. Uh, what is, who is that uh, great scientist, he says, mankind has only 1,000 years to survive <laughs> because of our own weapons and all kinds of destructive things and especially the spiritual destruction that we have, the spiritual decadence that we have uh, fabricated ourselves is killing us. The world is being shattered into pieces just because of that. So we have to listen to ourselves, come back to ourselves, know the danger and try to respect each other, try to hand in hand, stand together, help each other, and then only we can survive for more time. I, I invite all of you to uh, pay little attention uh, to this fact. Please close your eyes. Keep your palms one on the other and think of this great value. Please be respectful to all these great religious leaders, all the religious leaders that we have in the entire world. Close your eyes, look into yourself, listen to your breathing, listen to your own breathing. First, love starts from yourself. Realize the understand your own body. Listen to their body from head to toe. Please respect yourself. May I be well and happy and healthy. May I be well and happy and healthy. May I be well and happy and healthy. May all beings, may all our spiritual friends who are gathered here remember seen and unseen. There can be divine powers here, right here, right now with us to share this great, beautiful function. May all the spiritual beings who are gathered here, seen and unseen, be well and happy and healthy. May all the spiritual beings, seen and unseen, who are gathered here, be well and happy and healthy. May all the spiritual beings seen and unseen who are gathered here, be well and happy and healthy. May all beings seen and unseen 
within these premises, beyond these premises, in this area, in this beautiful city, in this beautiful state of California, in this beautiful country, the United States of America, in this earth, in this universe, and beyond this universe, may all beings, seen and unseen, be well and happy and healthy. May all beings, seen and unseen, be well and happy and healthy. May all beings, seen and unseen, be well and happy and healthy. Please take a good deep breath. Listen to your own breath. Slowly relax and release. One more time, take a good deep breath and slowly relax and release. One more time, take a good deep breath and slowly release and relax. Okay, let's come out of that now. <laughs> Did you feel love? Did you feel the power of love? So we have to start <laughs> from within, right? And then we go out without any barrier, without any label, without any class, religion, caste, nothing, to everyone and everything, including the, the nature itself. If we can love, if we can learn how to love, I think we can make this world a beautiful world to live, a peaceful world, Vasudhaiva, Kutumbakam, one family of different colors. That would be a very beautiful society then. And I thank you again for inviting me to this beautiful conference of uh, multi, uh, interfaith uh, religions. And uh, as the Buddha said, uh, we all, his first advice to, the, to his uh, army, <laughs> the saffron robe monks, go forward without stopping. Go help people. One, don't, two people don't take one road so that you can reach as many as you can and preach the Dhamma. Remember, it is the Dhamma, not the religion, <laughs> not the so-called label. It is the spirituality. It is the humanity. It is the love. Give this love to the people who are in darkness. I strongly believe all these great spiritual masters from time to time come from heaven to the earth to rescue us who are in utter darkness. Let's say Jesus, the Buddha, um, all these uh, uh, Muhammad, Allah and uh, uh, Satya Sri Sai Baba, all these great spiritual leaders come to this earth as, according to Buddhism, as great bodhisattvas. They are very spiritually powerful individuals, very spiritually powerful individuals. They do not come to this earth to divide humanity. They come to this earth to rescue us, to unite us in the name of spirituality, in the name of love, in the name of humanity. So let us stick together, let us keep our hands and hold each other and respect each other, learn how to appreciate each other's different chantings, different prayers, different costumes, okay, and appreciate that. They're, they are all very good uh, hearts. If we learn that, if we listen to that, we can be uh, better friends, good spiritual friends. And with that hope, I wish that this beautiful event 
uh, would be more meaningful and all of us be able to achieve that great goal, unity in diversity. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you so much.